What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a whole bunch of new stuff to share with you guys. Usually when I do these videos I like to focus on one retailer at a time and we're going to start with Blade HQ but I've got sort of a circuit to do today uh, for anything that anybody might have missed on some of my favorite retailers. So we're going to go Blade HQ then DLT then E-Knives and see what everybody's got currently in stock and what's coming soon. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Now if you want to stay here and listen to my commentary on some of these new knives you can but if you don't want to hear my voice and you just want to do it yourself that's completely fine. In fact I'll make it easy on you and link the new arrivals page and the coming soon pages for each retailer right down in the description where you can just simply go through and check this stuff Stuff out for yourself. All right, let's start off here with what Blade HQ has currently got listed as brand new here, the Wii Equivic. I'm kind of surprised that I don't have this one yet uh, or that it wasn't sent by Wii. I have a similar knife to the, Re the Wrecker. <laughs> kind of interesting. These in truthfully seem pretty basic. The Praxis Button Lock, however, is uh, a super duper welcome addition, especially in aluminum. Wow. <laughs> hey, Savivi, why, why are you leaving me hanging with this stuff? That sounds really um, entitled, but I just assumed they would send me this to showcase. Um, let's look at this green one here. That's really cool. What do we have for, oh, they did Nitro V this time and still kept it under $75. Very, very cool. That is a nice knife. Uh, I like to highlight some of the less expensive stuff because I know, you know, you're probably a lot of people right now are, are hanging out with family, right? Uh, and they found a little bit of free time. Maybe I'm going I'm to see what's going on on the Metal Complex YouTube channel, right? Maybe buy a knife. <laughs> This is the type of stuff that I like to highlight because it's not horribly expensive, right? You don't have to, you know, wake up Sunday morning or wake up Monday morning and be like, oh my gosh, what did I, what did I buy? Yeah, if it was the, uh, you know, Civivi Praxis button lock in nitro V and aluminum for $74.80, it's, it's not a bad thing to wake up to if you, if you weren't 100% sure what you were... <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing. Um, but yeah, those are pretty cool. I like that. I like that they kept them all. Oh, look at this now. The Chevalier in aluminum for $69.70. Also an excellent. Look at that. They kept it 14C 28N. That's wonderful. Very, very cool. I've, I've been calling for this for a bit. I like the aluminum because it offers so many different colors, so many more vibrant colors that you might not get with the G10 or the Micarta and gives that nice all metal feeling that so many of us love. Look at this one here. Aluminum and boy, it almost looks like San Ma. I don't think that's actually the case there, but that's a nice dark pattern they got on there. Can we can we get a zoom? Yeah, it looks all right. It kind of I thought it, for a sec there it looked like um, you know, maybe there's a core there, but I don't know. That one certainly does. <sighs> Holy moly, look at that. I'm sure that's just the pattern, but I wish I could see the spine. Doesn't it look like a core? It's definitely Damascus. It absolutely is. Most likely a 9CR, 10CR combination, but really nice looking. All right, so VV Propagnate, pro, pro, Propagnator, Propagnator? Okay, interesting fixed blade. Not expensive, not by a long shot. They even do it in Ultim. <laughs> The Sakoke, uh, definitely, definitely one of Civivi's best knives. I know it seems very, you know, like what's so special about it, but if you want to check out my review, I was uh, head over heels for that one. Definitely, definitely a recommendable knife and really nice there in the um, the Jade G10. Uh, the Best Deck Slasher, also looking, I'm pretty sure I've handled this one. That was also a nice one. Best Deck does a great crossbar lock. So again, if you're looking for something inexpensive, the, the Mora Desert Warrior, I'm pretty sure um, <laughs> it's 25 bucks. Oh man, I'm pretty sure Advanced Knife Pro was posting that in our uh, our little creator chat the other day. Uh, other day. And uh, uh, I was envious of that one. I mean, come on, 25 bucks. Look at this ZT Fixed Blade. Oh, they got the ZT6 in all black for 240. Come on, load. <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. I have the um 
I have the green and gray version and it's wonderful. I love this fixed blade. I absolutely love it. This is the best thing that ZT has come out with in a long time. 10.75 inches, 3V. I love the cross guard. This is a super nice knife and to this day is my dedicated like truck knife. This is the vehicle or this is the, the knife that I keep in my truck. Um, not you know, for combat reasons, but just to have a, a nice durable fixed blade there in my truck. That is such a wonderful knife on sale too. I don't think 240 bucks is a bad price for that at all, considering it's got titanium on. I'm pretty sure the guard and the butt cap are titanium. It's full tang, CPM 3V, made in the United States. Pretty nice. All right. Of course, we've also, we've always got a pile of Microtex. Um, so if you're looking for Microtex and yeah, you'd probably be able to find them. This QSP Puffin definitely is a good looking knife and... Is this titanium? Wow, that's a pretty good price. Yeah, titanium and S35VN for 148 bucks. Nice looking knife. Not an ultra complicated knife, right? But that's the type of price tag we like to see on that stuff. Moving on here, Kershaw Shy for 75 bucks. All righty. Uh, a whole bunch. I've seen Olamic Cutlery must have um, fulfilled a ton of dealer orders because I've seen a ton of new Olamics on various websites. If you want my opinion, the best one to buy is if you can find the Whippersnapper. Uh, those are going to have superior action. Then again, it's been a couple of years since I've handled anything new from Olamic, so take that with a grain of salt, but that's been my favorite here uh, recently. You can get an, what is this, MIC? Oh, it's a micarta version. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Zero tolerance. 0562 MIC frame lock micarta for now. I'm recording this on a Friday. You guys are watching it. If you watch the moment I upload, it'll be Saturday morning. You'll need to check and see if these are deals that are still available. This is just the time that I have to do this. I cannot record this on a Saturday, so I'm doing my best to try and keep up with everything here. So um, they may they may be on sale. They may not be on sale. I just need to check. Um, let's see here. Um, but that's a good buy. You can still get it for that price for sure. In fact, let's remember what page we're on here. Yeah. I would imagine that they might have a, uh, listing here. I probably should have checked Black Friday super sale. Well, oh, it says 1123 through 1126. So yeah, you guys actually should be good to go. You can check, uh, down in the description and these prices should actually be still there. So that's great. There's a ton of stuff on sale here. Okay. The Wii Kite Fin, that was a favorite. The Ziphia, still the same. The Kite Fin, that's not a bad, um, that's not a bad price there. Uh, Two forty nine for the Kite Fin. Huge fan of the Ultim Conspirator. I wish they were not ninety bucks. That's so weird. But let me tell you, the coolest and absolutely best knife dollar for dollar uh, that Civivi makes, and one of the best knives in existence. I have been shouting the name of this from the mountaintops the Civivi Vision FG, and specifically the Ultim version of it. I actually have it right here. I keep this on my, you can actually hear, I keep this knife on my uh, desk just permanently. It's just always here. I love this knife so much. I don't even care that it doesn't hit my criteria for a budget knife. It's 90 bucks, but well deserving of that price. Uh, if you That is a one and done pocket knife. If you just want one great knife to serve you for however long, the Civivi Vision FG uh, with the Super Lock from Snex is absolutely fantastic. And again, if you don't want it in Ultim, a lot of people don't like that clear yellow stuff. I do. I think it looks cool. But if you don't want it in the Ultim, then you can pick out, you know, whatever color you want. They've got a bunch of other subdued colors. I like the Ultim. I find that it's really easy to spot from wherever because it's the only thing that looks like that in my general vicinity. Um, so it's always really easy to find my Ultim knives. And plus the, the material is also like plenty durable and super strong. So... Some RS Chaos is in stock. Interesting. Um, so make sure that you check those out. That's a really cool uh, knife. And it is a uh, button operated liner lock, not a plunge lock. So a lot more reliable than some of the other button lock knives that we've seen here lately. Um, let's move on here. I can't do too many pages because I do want to go back and check out some other uh, retailers here. SRM Knives, Rubik, Ambi. Okay, never heard of them. The CGRB uh, Mika, which is essentially 
alongside the other one that they make, which is the small pyrite, which just looks a little bit, it's right here at the mini pyrite. I don't know why they call the other one the Mika. It looks just like a mini pyrite. Those are also great. If you like the idea of a pyrite in a teeny tiny configuration, then check those out. Uh, moving on, we still have some Riot XOKs, the gravity morphing thing. Be careful with those. Those are a little bit wacky. <laughs> Uh, there's an MSI serrated sitting there. We've got a couple of giant mouses on sale for 188. Not bad. That's a good uh, profile for that knife. And we also have the Shark Cub sitting there in a few different configurations. Um, it looks like smoked Ultim. Okay, clear brown. If that's what you like, there you go. I can kind of understand why those are still there. The Dessert Warrior Elementum 2 button lock is also sitting in stock along with some dice and donut oh, just bizarre <laughs> all right a lot of a lot of cool stuff on blade hq let's check out dlt trading and see what they've got under their newest arrivals swiss army net cord that's not my the most super interesting thing in the world there's a ton of curtis f3 medium sitting here in s45 vn sorry i didn't turn my phone off should have before i started this video S45VN, lots of stuff. We have the small Sabenza 31, a whole bunch of those. I think those have been sitting there for maybe maybe a day. Protec Godfather in red is also there. We have the Protec Run 5. We have some special edition versions of the Godson. Uh, we have a super special edition version of the uh, SBR. That is a custom uh, so you're going to get a little bit of extra flair there. Most likely, DLT's image is not doing this knife justice because the Protec customs are always super flashy. Here's a whole bunch of these Olamic uh, whippersnappers that I was talking about here. Um, what do we have here? Oh, my God. Is this in Zirconium? Oh. Mm, I don't yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I always feel bad about recording because I there's a good chance I'm going to turn around and buy it immediately after the video goes up. Ah, man. That is about the most ideal version of this to me that that exists. Um S90V. Oh man, that is such a nice knife. Gosh dang it. <laughs> What is this? Is there a little gemstone in the pocket clip? What is going on? The whippers are from a little bit of blah, 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 blah. What is that little thing right there? It looks like a gemstone. <laughs> Maybe it's a cubic zirconia. I'm, I don't know. Die, die cut pin. Okay. Wow. That is a really nice version of that. I love that. Okay. I'm going to have to think about that one. That's real tempting. All right. Let's go back here and take a look. Whole bunch of really cool ones. I mean, sincerely, if you're going to buy an Olamic, the Whippersnapper is the way to go. Absolutely. The action, in my experience, is just really, really great. The Red Horse Hellraiser Piecers, I was supposed to receive one of these in the mail, and the, the uh, owner messaged me, and he said, do you receive it yet? And I said, no, I don't, I don't have anything. Do you have tracking? And I, I wonder if maybe it got lost. I, I haven't heard back, um, but I've handled these before, and they're really cool. They're very, very different. I mean, it's, it looks exactly like what it sounds. It's the Hellraiser, right? Um, so yeah, they're super cool. And to my knowledge, these are actually made in the USA. Is that really true? Let's look if I remember correctly. No, I'm wrong. Made in China. Okay. Well, that's why we check, right? I was going to say that'd be a ridiculous price for <laughs> made in the USA, right? Um, but okay. Still super cool. I'm not sure who the OEM is, but I like them. Red Horse War Pig Production, which I think is maybe fairly new i knew that they were doing the hellraiser i mean they they make the custom ones in the usa but these production ones um this is a new also made in china um but the i remember the war pig was like a brand new knife like the like the custom or the mid-tech versions were brand new but also a super cool knife that's neat that they brought that into the production world still pretty expensive but there's a bunch of vehement uh mongrels in stock and these are definitely made in the usa and they're also very very nice you can go back and check out my review where uh, i was not sure if i would enjoy the knife i think one of my final critiques was i wish the blade was taller because it looks like a kind of a narrow blade uh, versus the more robust handle um, but it's still a very, very nice knife. I like this one right here with the uh, sort of plasma anno, and I bet that's nice and shiny too. Yeah, that's a cool one right there. These are all S45VN, which is, that's one of those blade seals I really like to see 
on a premium user. I would prefer S45VN over M390, so I'm glad they're doing that. Let's go on to page three. As soon as the uh, carrier pigeon interacts with the servers on Blade HQ, the PMP Beast Prime uh, is a thing. I honestly didn't know that these were here. I uh, This is one that I was expecting to receive uh, for review. Maybe I'll have to ask. I wonder how thick these are. So these are in what blade steel? Probably thinner. Blade thickness is almost a quarter inch and in 3V. Interesting. So this is going to be a very similar. I'm so glad I didn't do D2. This is going to be not quite as thick as the Alpha Beast, but uh, more uh, the, the same dimensions as the Grizzly. Um, and it's not almost nine and a quarter. So that is a big knife in CPM 3V. I think that of all of the stuff that has been released from PMP here recently, that is probably the best priced. It's definitely in the overbuilt category, right? But that's probably the best priced in the series. Very interesting and fully available in blasted tie, bronze tie, another option for blasted. And, oh, satin blade versus... No. Oh, blue clip. Okay. And then blue tie. So there's a bunch of different versions of that available. Um, let's see here. Riot XOK is more of them. We have the Demco Shark Cub in CPM 20 CV and titanium. That's what I would go with. And the um, the Shark's Foot version, I think that's probably, that would be my favorite. I still need to get one of those to check out. I wonder if DLT would send me one to take a look at. Um, a whole bunch of Praetorian Ts, that doesn't surprise me. I think those were here last time because we, we very recently did DLT and I feel like these were there. Oh, the, the carbine rifle knife is also here on DLT trading. That's the one with one, two, three, it's got three different locks. <laughs> that thing is, is really fun. If you just like the crazy overbuilt stuff and that one is also going to be a quarter inch thick. That's definitely one of my, uh, like, the weirdest overbuilt knives in my collection. No no doubt about it. Tons of great stuff from the launch series. And look at that, an all-black Kershaw live wire and one in Tanto. Do not skip over these when you're considering what full-size USA OTF you want to buy. These are absolutely just as knife. <laughs> just as knife. Just as, they are just as knife. <laughs> as the Ultratech, but more importantly, they're just as nice as the Microtech Ultratech, the uh, the Shift, uh, the Recon 35, right? Um, all of those hyper-competitive, true USA OTFs, so do not skip on those. We have the Kunmu Pulsar sitting in stock at DLT, the Kunmu X Tau, the Kunmu Mini Tau. We have the Hogue Deca in um, FDE uh, Magna Cut sitting in stock. That's really cool. A whole bunch of really great... This is a nice time to just sit down, relax, and shop for knives. Even if you don't <laughs> buy anything. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just scroll with no intention of buying, and then I look at stuff, and then I don't, right? It's it's fun. There's just a ton of stuff to look at right now. The Swiss Tool MX, which is probably the nicest, like the overall quality of the Swiss Tool Spirit MX is probably, I don't know if that's actually the spirit, but I think this is the one that I have, and I love that thing. It's super nice. Okay, I think we're actually getting back into the area that we were in um, the last time that I covered DLT. So let's shift gears and go over to eKnives and check out their new <laughs> I really wish that I could say I believe that these are still in stock, but you know what? How? <laughs> How are these in stock? What? Oh, man. I haven't reloaded the page this whole time, which means these have legitimately been sitting here. Spear point. I'm sorry. The page is still trying to load, but blue and red um, in what steel? Well, we can look here on the other picture. S45VN. Okay, weird little batch of hinders there on e-knives. Perhaps those will last. Probably not, though, guys. By the time you see this uploaded, even though these are still sitting here now, by the time you guys get into this upload, which will be almost 24 hours later, uh, probably not, right? The hinders are easier to get now than they were a few years ago, but still difficult to get. There's also an amphibian just sitting here um, that will also probably be gone. A large Nkosi is sitting here. <laughs> A large Sabenza 31 and Bog Oak. 
Um, glass blasted titanium. Oh boy, uh, polished. Wow, beautiful. Some cool stuff sitting here at E-Knives. Spartan Blades Custom uh, Harzy Folder. Stormwatch. Oh my god, that is nice. <laughs> oh man. God and Country, that's just like the one that I gave away. Very cool. Plague Doctor, also cool. Um, these are the 3.25 inch versions. So make sure you look. Some of these are 4 inch and some of them are 3.25 inch. So this is not exactly like the one I gave away. I gave away one in... Um, there was a four inch configuration. Um, these, I've seen these sitting around. This will likely still be here. The Glycon in natural aluminum and titanium. Um, so that all gray look, that's really cool. Um, let's see here, what else we have? Uh, an MSI uh, sitting here in the injection mold plastic, which is a great uh, foundation for customization. We have a two-tone SOCOM Elite manual that will, if it's not gone, Within 24 hours, it will certainly be gone after this video goes up. That is, those are the USA ones, so make sure and watch out for that. Frag Combat Troodon Delta um, with the DLC Shadow, uh, Shadow, Shadow, very cool, it's super cool without having to pay like multiple thousands of dollars for the full-on customs. It's still a thousand-dollar OTF, right? There's a, an automatic Microtech SOCOM two-tone sitting right there. Uh, lefty small Sabenza. We have some hydras. I think the hydras are sitting around. Those are the smaller. The, that would be a cool color for a larger Dirac, a Dirac Delta. We have a Hellhound in frag uh, for the Hera sitting there. That's cool. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to pick out the more interesting stuff. Stitch, lots of, there's the, the combat Troodon and the, um, uh, what do they call this? They call that OD green, okay? It just looks a little like, God, look at that. Combat Troodon Hellhound in copper, uh, volcanic river Damascus. Wow, nasty blade. Um, we have the Protec PT in bronze and Magna Cut, smoky gray. Wish they would do that on more of their production knives. It's very cool. Heretic Knives Gin. We have another Glycon sitting there. We have a black Hydra. So I've been waiting for just a plain Hydra because I, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to pick one of these up. This is the one I accidentally fired into my hand and I, it, it was a complete accident. Um, but I, it's like the only super high quality single action OTF on the market right now that you can actually get. Um, wow. Yeah, that's tempting. I hate the pocket clip on that thing. My God, is that ugly. The rest of the knife is super cool. Um, I don't know. Sith Lord Ultra Tech sitting there. Uh, Bounty Hunter Ultra Tech sitting there. Bunch of Medfords. There's always Medfords sitting around. If you're like on the hunt for the ideal Medford, well, you know, you got, you got plenty of shopping you can do like at any time because those things aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Dirac in camo, Dirac Delta, give us those bigger ones in that uh, uh, black and gray camo, and that'd be super cool. Livewire, they've got the uh, Anax sitting there, very cool, okay. Um, oh, and they also have the uh, War Pig sitting here. I wonder if those are the same price. I feel like DLT's price was a little lower. Um, okay. Anything else on this page? If not, we're going to go back to the um, coming soon. Is that the GTX 25? I haven't seen one of those little Guardian Tacticals in a long time. I mean, literally since I did the video on it. A plain Microtech SOCOM Elite Auto sitting right there. If you're looking for the USA automatic version of the SOCOM and you don't want any two-tone, there's one sitting here on E-Knives. At least one. Maybe more. Uh, maybe multiple. Hmm... There's a Recon Elite sitting here. Let's go one more page. There's a lot of really interesting... I should have done um, E-Knives first. Yeah, they've got them in black too. So what's the Elite? It's like the Recon 40. So it's a gigantic USA OTF, but it has a compound Tanto blade. So the tip of the uh, Tanto is actually hollow and the primary grind is flat, which is very odd for uh, any knife, not, not just OTFs. So, um, oh boy, that is a nice Robert Carter. Let's look at that. I reviewed this knife a long time ago. Um, come on, I want to see the pictures. This is probably an evolution or different model. 
Seven, it's a smaller one. So CPM 154, Core Damascus, Rob Mascus, sole author. So that's sole authorship. That is beautiful. Wow. Yep, that's a nice knife. If that was, um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, if that thing was over eight inches, that is probably the knife that I would zero in on after um, this video. If you like smaller knives and you're in that, you know, if you're looking for a custom knife, then there you go. There's one sitting there. God. Red Microtech Combat Troodon Warhound. That is an awesome OTF, this one right here. Um, I don't have one of these Warhounds. I have the Hellhound and the, the Hellraiser, but I don't have that one. Maybe I need to add that one to the collection. Um, another Socom Elite Automatic in Stonewash sitting right there. Very, very cool. Okay, let's go real quick and look at coming soon on Blade HQ. I'm not going to go too far in. This is already going to be a super long video, right? Just trying to offer you guys something fun and entertaining um, for, uh, you know, those of you who are sitting around on Saturday morning just wanting to do something like this. The Spyderco Manix 2. Which uh, steel is this? Crewware. Very nice. That will surely be hyper popular. I don't think we need to talk too much about that one. Spyderco PM2 and Magna Cut. That's the new... Spyderco PM2 Salt. Interesting. Um, Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight Salt. So is MagnaCut their new salt steel? Yes. Cool. All right. Well, that makes way more sense because... Um, God, I don't even remember what the heck they were using. H1? Uh, God bless anyone who likes H1 steel. <laughs> I mean, why don't you just use a gum wrapper, you know? I, I honestly think that tinfoil would hold an edge longer than H1. Magna Cut is a much better choice. That is very cool. I, I love that. Uh, awesome. Okay. PM2, that's most likely crew wear. M4 Tenacious is still coming. The XL, yeah, hopefully in Magna Cut. The Micro Jimbo. This is the new Spyderco Bodacious, which... Honestly, it's like they took, like, imagine they took Mario 64 and ported it to Super Nintendo. I, that's what it looks like to me. Like, the Shaman, except they just made it, <laughs> like, when they took it from 64 bits to 32 bits. Like, I'm, you know what? It's probably going to be a great knife, but the, the scales are so, like, blocky and, uh Thank God they didn't put this lanyard hole above that screw. That would have been stupid. That's edging in there a little bit, but... And why? Spyderco, why are you releasing these in S30V? I mean, oh, S30V is great, and Spyderco probably has, like, the best S30V on the market, for sure. But why? Like, why wouldn't you release it in a different base blade steel? Why not Spy 27? Like, why, why did they invest in creating this proprietary Spyderco exclusive steel if we don't get new releases in, in Spy 27, which is essentially S45VN. Um, weird. Okay, I'll get one and review it, I promise. Maybe I'll like it. That Cobalt looks nice. Well, there we go, <laughs> Spy 27. Maybe they reserve that for special run stuff. Not bad, that's a cool one right there. Lots of spider codes for pre-order, holy moly. Black Bodacious for $10 more because black, you know? This knife, uh, the Nefaris, was sent to me by a few different people saying, you got to check this knife out. Now, I'm going to tell you, this doesn't look super special. I mean, it looks nice. It just doesn't look super duper special right off the bat. I know apparently Neves Knives really likes this one. Um, so I am interested in checking it out. I'll have to do that. We have a purple military too. Tons, tons of Spyderco releases. Pink, lightweight. This guy's still coming. The best Wii knife ever, apparently still coming, in my opinion. Bodacious, more of those. The Cold Steel Mayhem, that's there. Sage 5 Lightweight, is that Maximate? Maybe. Let's see. Anything else here? Not anything that looks super duper interesting, but that was definitely a more interesting page than I've seen here lately. Let's, take, let's check out the DLT Drops page. Is there anything here that is really like super duper interesting. That is a good looking fixed blade. And if they had any left that looks like this, the K2 and Mongrel, 
uh, from Vehement, I would have I would have purchased one. Nope, that's it. Does E Knives have anything on their coming soon page? They they have a Black Friday page. I didn't even look. Let's look at that. Okay, a few things here for Black Friday that you can definitely get for less money. Oh, good. Oh, I love to read uh, one star reviews on on knives like this because there's it's always something like weird or personal or like not helpful. So let's see. Or maybe they actually had an issue. I just want to read. Beautiful knife, but major flaws. There's not enough positive retention on the pocket clip. Okay, <laughs> that's that's just wrong. I'm not even going to say that I disagree. That's just wrong. <laughs> I like spherical ball design, but comes off too easy. Like, it comes out of your pocket while you're doing what? Pulling on it? It's supposed to. The first day having having knife, it's a beautiful knife, by the way. Well, we know because you said that in the title of the review. By the way, but went to take a shower, took off pants carefully, and the knife fell out of my pocket and onto brick floor from about two inches. Not that high. Where is your shower? <laughs> what? What? This is my favorite knife review of all the time. The locking mechanism on the knife failed and the blade came open and chipped the tip of the blade. Wait. The locking mechanism failed and the knife came open? So, wait, he's saying... Chip, chip the blade. So, no, no, no. He's saying that this came out of his pants and hit the brick floor and the knife, the knife deployed? Okay, let me, I gotta get a picture of this. <laughs> okay, so he took his pants off and, and the knife fell out of his pants from two inches off the ground. And the impact was apparently enough to deploy the blade and chip it against the floor. Here's what I think happened. Here's what I think happened. This guy paid $400 for a knife. Because you guys have seen me review this knife. Now, it's weird and it's not for everybody. But it is by no means a um, a, a knife that it doesn't have any quality. On top of that, anybody who's ever experienced these ball bearing clips, none of them, and I mean exactly none of them, are low retention. And if anything, they are too pinchy. In fact, that's what I always say about these things. They are too pinchy. This guy took his pants off violently and flung this knife against the ground, um, which is the only way that the thing is going to somehow deploy in the closed position. I still don't know how that would happen because it's you have to create the tension with the spring. It's a dual action automatic knife, meaning the only way it's going to deploy is if you create enough spring tension to throw the blade into the open position. So the amount of force it would take to get this thing to deploy, which then again, I, I still don't even know how that would happen. Certainly not from two inches off the brown, ground while you take your pants off on a brick patio, which is also where your shower is located. I don't understand. There's, this review has... I should become a review reviewer. There's not enough here. The picture... There's no... I can't paint a picture in my head where this makes sense. One star. I... <laughs> I was running. I needed a shower so badly that I violently whipped my pants off mid-sprint into my brick patio, which happened to be just outside of the door that leads eventually to my shower. And the impact caused this thing to have damage, and now I'm upset about it and regret the $400 that I spent. That that seems like a more accurate review. <laughs> Those are always the best. One-star reviews on stuff like this are always the best. They never make any sense. Oh, man. If you're gonna leave a review, be honest, be helpful, add context, paint a clear picture. Otherwise, this is meaningless. This is meaningless. People like me are gonna read those reviews, right? And in this review, to me, I would say dismissed. <laughs> this makes no sense. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. We should definitely end it on that note. This was fun, like I said, each of these pages will be listed down in the description so that you guys can check these out if you want to. Uh, the new arrivals pages and the coming soon or the Black Friday stuff if you want to check this out. Um, I hope you had fun doing a little bit of knife shopping with me today. I hope you all have an excellent re weekend, uh, spending time with family, friends, wherever you are. 
Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.